live from our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. It is a Sunday evening master class. And now our chief instructor, best-selling author and lecturer, the Reverend Dr. Charlotte Manning. Good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome to Sunday evening master class with Dr. Charlotte, where we are exploring some tough issues from a spiritual lens. We are so excited to have our relationship expert back with us by popular demand. Oh my goodness. I got so many emails about uh, Dr. Phil Good on our show a couple of weeks ago that we had done everything we could to get him back last week, but because of the events going on in Kentucky and what have you, the tornado, uh, we decided that we would wait this week, particularly because we are into Christmas week. So we thought this, this would be a great time for us to have Dr. Phil back with us. So he's going to be joining us shortly, right after our break. So I wanted to welcome you all to Sunday Evening Masterclass. If this is your first time with us, we say welcome. And we ask you if you would not share this with a friend to let other people know that we uh, we talk about a plethora of topics on Sunday Night Masterclass because everything that we do, everything that we are, everything that we be has an energetic flow about it. So everything that we put out into the universe, we get back. I like to say your income makes manifest your outcome. So your income being what's going on on in the inside of you. So we have a lot to talk about tonight as we pursue, we go into sacred relationships 2.0. And we're going to have Dr. Phil come on with us relatively early because we ended up, um, not being able to answer all of the questions that we had gotten from him uh, two weeks ago. So there are a lot of people that had questions and we're going to bring him on and allow him to, um, to talk more about the work that he does and his broadcast uh, or his uh, podcast is now being broadcast in nine different countries, he told us in the pre-production. So I'm really, really, really excited about that. But uh, I spoke at the Unity Church of Washington, this D.C. this morning, and the topic that I talked about was my talk title was, Would It Be Okay?, and Reverend Sylvia Sumter did a class with us. Uh, she is the senior minister and spiritual leader at the uh, Unity of Washington, D.C. And she shared this with us and, uh, and asked us if it would be okay, if everything didn't have to be exactly the way we thought it should or things shouldn't turn out the way that we thought it might, would it be okay if we just let it be. So of course my work is around forgiveness and I do most of the things that I do. I try to energetically weave within that thread because I believe that the cornerstones of life are around forgiveness and love. And of course in miracles teaches us if you're not coming from a place of, of love, then you're coming from a place of fear. Fear can be uh, reduced to its lowest common denominator when we look at anger, when we look at upset, when we look at our detachment to the energetic flow of life. That imbalance is usually because we are afraid of something. I think it was Will Smith that said, your greatest achievement or your greatest accomplishment comes on the other side of fear. And that means breaking through those fears that you may have about, about things that are going on in your life, things that are going on in your world. And I think so many of us, since we have been going through um, this COVID pandemic crisis has affected everything, and it's a global uh, uh, 
uh, effect. So it's not that we can escape what's going on in this outside world. Everywhere we go, everything is affected by this COVID pandemic. So we were talking about that and we were saying how we are bombarded and inundated with so much negative energy right now. And energy has the ability to um, uh, create a residual effect. So I was saying this morning that it's, I think it's really important that we focus on building a spiritual toolkit that will allow us to compensate when so much negative energy is, is coming our way. Number one, stop watching so doggone much TV. And rather you you are uh, a, a Fox listener or an MSNBC uh, listener, you're getting bombarded with a deluge of information, and most of it, as forty five used to say, is fake news or it's altered news. And 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 again, living in a world of cause and effect. What's true to some may not be true to others, and what's true to others may not be true to some. So I found this thing that I like to use and I call it, you know, the four concepts of order. And, it, you know, order is when everything is in the flow. Everything is going the way that we need. Energetically, you're in alignment and all this other good stuff. Then you have disorder when you find yourself... Um, in a flux of when things are not going well or when things are out of order. Then we have reorder or repair when we're trying to go back to or find our way or navigate our way back to order or what we recognize and acknowledge of order. And then we have divine order. So order is and divine order is the cornerstone of where we want to find ourselves in the flow of life. So one of the things that I have, you know, age is, 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 is a wonderful thing because it teaches you really and truly what's important in life. And you often hear me say, you know, I don't argue with old people and old people can be older than me or younger than me. But the whole concept is that I don't have to make somebody else wrong in order to make myself right. So one of the principles around staying in that flow or in order is to allow yourself to be able to navigate through that energetic flow that keeps you balanced. So as we were talking about there, as I was sharing with that with uh, our congregation this morning, I was saying how much we just get caught up in the ebb and flow. Um, if you notice, I say you need to pay attention to how programming works because you'll see in depressing news cycles, you have some kind of medication prior to and some kind of medication afterwards, or it is either selling drugs or cars. <laughs> And as when you watch in television and they go to a commercial break, they're either sell drugs or cars. Uh, there are all kinds of things that they're keeping you uh, distracted from the what's going on. So, you know, one of the things that I said, is, if, if, if I'm going to I'm, now, I'm not saying put your head in the sand and not allow yourself to know these things that are going on in the world, because we do need to know that. And we do need to know that the effect that everything we do has an effect on everything that we are. So in our relationships, as Dr. Phil is going to talk to us more about this evening, in our relationships, our relationships now, if you don't think exactly the way somebody else is, somebody else thinks, then you're full of bunk. If, if, somebody else can't convince you that you're supposed to think that the way that they think, then they're mad at you or they don't want to have a friendship with you. And I mean to tell you, we're seeing this in the halls of Congress. You know, can you imagine walking through and working with people on a daily basis and not speaking to them because they are of a different party? That's, that's just crazy to me. So anyway, 
we want to talk more about order, disorder, reorder, and divine order. And we're going to be talking about that more as, as we proceed. And I think uh, Dr. Phil will be talking to us a little bit about how to uh, keep yourself in the ebb and flow of life, how not to sweat the small stuff, how to acquiesce in some instances where it's just a lot easier not to participate. And I always say it takes two people to fight two people. You have to engage in an argument with someone in order for an argument to occur. So if you're just not willing to go there because it's just not important what somebody else may think or feel or want to impose on you, then you'll be a whole lot happier. Trust me when I tell you, if in fact they're wrong about something that you, it it will eventually come out. They will find a way. And I've had that happen. And I will, someone will say to me something, you know, about a certain situation. I said, no, I don't, I think that it is so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. And they said, no, 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 you're not. I said, well, okay. All right. Because eventually the truth will come out or whatever it is that you're talking about will make itself uh, uh, known to or available to you. So you don't have to engage in argumentative and, and, you know, disdain with other people because at the end of the day, what, what the heck does it even really matter? It's not that important. So we're excited about having Dr. Phil with us tonight. Uh, I can't tell you, uh, I've watched this young man grow up and to be just an incredible young man who really sees life in a a, a 2.0 perspective, a new millennium perspective. And I have been so honored to be a part of his life. As his coach, as his counselor, he now coaches me as much as I coach him. And he's absolutely an incredible young man. So we're going to go and we're going to pay some bills early so we can get Dr. Phil on here and he can share his expertise on sacred relationship, particularly during the hot holidays. So this is Dr. Charlotte on the New Thought Media Network. New Thought Media Network is on the rise. We're looking to grow with you. Do you have technical media experience or perhaps a desire to learn? Are you willing to volunteer your precious time and attention? We share this message to benefit all. If you possess a computer with a camera and a microphone, we will share our knowledge with you. Behind the scenes or being the star, let us bless our one. Contact us at info at ntmedia.org. Spiritual Living Denver for your continued support. Thank you Center for Spiritual Living Midtown Atlanta for your monthly contribution. Thank you Center for Spiritual Living North Jersey for your monthly contribution. And Suze Aja, thank you for your very generous donation. generous technology grant. And a big shout out to all our committed donors. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is Dr. Charlotte and you're coming to, uh, we're coming to you rather live uh, on the New Thought Media Network right here in Washington, D.C. I'm in a disclosed location. I like to say that's Pastor Michael's 
uh, secret. Uh, but no, everybody knows where I am. So, Pastor Michael, are you there? Hi. We had I'm like, I'm like, okay. I'm like God. I'm everywhere. <laughs> you know, so so I'm you know I'm all I'm always in the background. I'm always saying yes. What, well, you were you mean? were in Columbus, Ohio this morning, huh? Yes, I was speaking to the wonderful people at the Columbus CSL, and that was that was all really right. good. It was good, right. good time was had by all. So I told yeah. them I told them the truth about Christmas. <laughs> oh, okay. That's the, well, we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk next week, next Sunday. We're gonna be talking about Kwanzaa. So okay. we're gonna talk about the, all the principles around. We'll be able to integrate those two things together. How Christmas and Kwanzaa are, are work in concert with each other from that new thought perspective. Well, how I know you're chomping at the bit, and so am I, because we've been talking about bringing Dr. Phil on, back on with us, and all the questions and all of that that we've been having. People have been emailing Michael and emailing me, and I mean, everybody's like, you know, we want to get this Dr. Phil back on. And, you know, at, at first it was like, Dr. Phil? Dr. Phil's going to be on your course. <laughs> The real Dr. Phil is going to be on our show. Okay. So how okay. are you, my darling? How are you? I, I am well today and mm -hmm. I'm excited to be back on the show. Awesome. Well, you know, we know that you had a whole bunch of stuff that you have wanted to talk about uh, the last time you were on. Mm -hmm. And I know Michael has a question that uh, he got from uh, uh, someone that he wants to ask, but I want to give you the platform and let you just go ahead and, and share what you want to share. And then we'll kind of feed on to each other if you, if you like. Okay. So um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about because I was watching this uh, video or whatnot, and I saw something about um, love and um, being in relationships, but or whatever. But what I got from it was the difference between love and compatibility. So what that means is to a lot of people, um, people confuse a lot of times being in love with actually being compatible with somebody because. When you're in the first, what you say, three months of relationship, you believe that this is the, the greatest person you ever met and this is the love of my life, yada, yada, yada. But then what happens is people start to, and I call it just um, go through the motions of what they believe what should happen next. So it's kind of like a, it's kind of like an uh, autopilot of the relationship. So you have going starting from meeting or whatever then y'all been dating for a while oh we've been dating for a while so let's take the next step let's be together officially okay we've been official for this long let's go to the next step which is living together then marriage kids whatever but during that time they haven't actually figured out if they're actually compatible that's why when a lot of times when people um get in these relationships and midway through the second year of their marriage they figure out oh i wasn't really compatible with this person at all it was just the 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 i don't know the fairy dust fairy tale or whatever part yeah, of it we that call we just it let the, stream we, alone we call it the date and dance yeah the date and dance yeah. date and dance honeymoon period whatever whatever that that uh period of time is um when y'all are not really arguing and it puts the a lot of it puts you talked about the the arguments whatever but it puts the blinders on a lot of people because well like you said about the uh, toothpaste one day to me personally <laughs> this stuff like that <laughs> stuff stuff like that does does he squeeze from the the middle or the the end of toothpaste whatever and oh i really don't even like how this person chews their food so it it you really have to be <laughs> cognizant you really have to be cognizant of doing that and especially during the time period that we're in is the holidays so during the holidays um you do have to go to other people's houses or whatever and you really start to see one how they act in front of people and um you you two may have been just cooped up together 
for so long that you really haven't needed to react with, especially like family, other friends and stuff like that. But when that time comes, you may think they're the most disgusting person ever. And then y'all just got to deal with it. So the relationship can start to go roller coaster downhill from that point. And I just think that um, there needs to be a lot more communication up front in relationships uh, about what what it is that we do and don't like or whatnot. So because that that'll uh, bypass some of the hardships that come later on in relationships. So how how have you learned these lessons? Are these do these come from personal experience <laughs> that you draw these parallels and you're able to uh are you your best teacher? I would say yes. So just reading, you know, reading a lot. I read a lot of books on just relationships and spirituality and just uh finding yourself first before you get out there. Um and that's that's another thing that would work in this instance is people think that finding a relationship is going to change their their whole world but they fail to change their inner world first and then um be the person who they want to date pretty much because mm -hmm. that'll attract to the person that you actually want to be with but people just believe i can just be this person and then whoever comes comes and it'll be that but personally yes i have um I have been through a lot in this short period of time because people always say like, you're so young, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's fine. But in my 20s or whatever, I did go through uh, some marriage type relationship stuff because I mean, other than like the title, but living with somebody for an extended period of time, you are basically married. So you learn a lot about one, um, yourself, and what you really like, what you really uh, want in a person. And then mm -hmm. you learn about, I used to argue a lot, okay? Even with you, I used to be like, no, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Try that. That's not right or whatever. But you learn to learn that, like you said, everything don't have to be an argument. Everything does not have to be a win. And that's what people do in a, a lot in relationships. They want to win. So you want to win with your with your girlfriend or boyfriend or spouse or whatever uh, that you have, but in the end, one y'all both lose because that just that just put another tack into your relationship balloon that's mm -hmm. soon to explode. Um, and then in the in the real end, one you're gonna either be alone because you won't learn how to change, um, or Y'all just gonna be in, in a in a long toxic type relationship. Or you end up taking the same that the same lesson right. into right. the next relationship. Exactly. So you know, I always say you just change the garment, you know, until you get inside of and will work with the relationship itself. Because everything that you're looking for in someone else is what's most lacking in yourself. So exactly. you see, you know, they say opposites attract, but in fact, opposites really are not attracting that you're seeing in that someone else, that thing that you wish was most prominent or most prevalent in you. So you see shy people that tend to gravitate toward gregarious kind of people, what have you. And when you and I first met, I remember, you know, I just call her Vanessa, you know, I don't, I don't <laughs> ask, <laughs> but you were in a live-in relationship. And I, and mm -hmm. I think you and I had really talked a lot about the fact that there was a level of expectation. Boys tend to want women like their moms, you know, and, and girls tend to want guys like their dad and when they see that 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 duality mm -hmm. you know doesn't exist in their mm -hmm. personal relationships then they get all flustered and bothered and why you know why can't you be more like my father have you ever heard that or why can't you be oh. more like my mother have you heard that and i said you know they end up telling you exactly what it is but i think with you what was most interesting because I, you know, a lot of people may not know this about you, but you are really nice, romantic kind of guy. And you're one of those guys that a lot of women would say, oh, he's just too nice. 
because you respect yeah. so i yeah but i so so this is <laughs> this is the this is the part of the like full transparency uh of of the show because i did i did used to be nice and then i went through a period um i don't i don't know if you remember in like 2015 16 or so where i wasn't nice anymore i wasn't i was i was still like respectful to the people who i was supposed to be respectful to like the elders and you got stuff like people like that or whatever that's fine but a lot of <laughs> other people nah you go you're gonna get the 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 hurt is what it was it was the hurt that i had experienced in the past relationship just not healed and mended and it just came off as oh i have to be this because when i was nice this is what happened so i had mm -hmm. to i had to flip the switch and say okay now i'm just going to be a um a, a hole Whoa. basically <laughs> <laughs> basically um and i figured out that that wasn't really me and the the prime example of this is if you remember when LeBron first went to the Miami Heat, he was a villain, and he he embraced being a villain. He um, he talked to the crowd. He was doing this whatever when they would boo him whatever because that energy is what what he was embracing. But he also figured out that that was that was some of the worst times of him playing basketball. Not mm -hmm. stats wise, but just having fun and enjoying the game. His mm -hmm. love for the game had been lost because he was really trying to be something that he really wasn't. So that's what I had to do also is go back to, um, now I did have to uh, say some of the stuff I won't take anymore as far as um, letting certain stuff slide and um, just standing up for myself a lot mm -hmm. more, mm -hmm. but being just, overly mean it just wasn't it wasn't really me and i can feel like natural, a darkness right. yeah it wasn't natural and you could feel yeah. you can really feel like a darkness around you when you do stuff that's that's like you said not natural so mm -hmm. i did i did learn that too but you have to one of the things that you have to do when you're coming outside of your character is that you have to it 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 takes um, it takes more of an effort to be something that you're not rather than being fully authentic and doing the things and, and gravitating towards the same, the same type of personality. Now that doesn't mean that, you know, if there's a lesson that you need to learn that the universe is not going to bring that person into your life that would best give you the lesson that you need. However, you also have to recognize what you put out, you're going to get back. Right. So you, you may hurt someone in that relationship in a previous relationship and end up being hurt in another one. So I'm always, I'm always saying to, to, you know, Shakespeare said to thine own self be true. And you have to do the things that fulfill you so that you show up in your full authentic self. And you're right. not being, you're not being, uh, you're not in pretense as most people do. And that's what happens. And I think I told you that when you were with Vanessa, I said, you guys are in that dating dance. Yeah. And you're doing those, you're doing all of the things you're tiptoeing around and she's showing you the best side of her and you're showing her the best side of you. But you know, the deal is what, how do you feel about her when you see the drool coming down the side of her face when she gets up at first thing in the morning and her hair smashed up like that and that kind of thing, the real right. deal as we call right. it. So that's where I think that's where re real, real relationships are cultivated on that level. Right. Yeah. And that's where the, like the term where the rubber meets the road, that's yeah. when the real relationship starts too. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what I, that's what I think. Um, mm -hmm. That when, when all this, when all the little fluff and stuff is going on, that's, that's cool because it's, it's good to feel and it, it, it feels like you get just hits of dopamine every day with this person, whatever, and you just like to watch them. You even like to watch them sleep. It's it's so much of, um, and it, it's and it's crazy. I said dopamine, and 
really the the same receptors that's in the brain that you get from the the same type of high that you get from doing drugs is the same type of high that that's released when you're in a relationship and yes. that's at that beginning part so yeah. if you feel like you are so addicted to this person that's really why because it's mm -hmm. really a, an addiction so when that addiction or whatever wears off then where are y'all and that's what mm -hmm. um what ends a lot of relationships because now we're just we're talking about the the 2.0 uh relationships and the the new millennium relationships a lot of people just have those relationships and that's it a lot of mm -hmm. people are being in three four month relationships at a time and it mm -hmm. can go from person to person and that's one of the issues because there's no there's no one there's no break and then there's no healing going on um mm -hmm. they're still dealing with stuff that they was dealing with 10 years ago and just yeah. bringing it from person to person. Yeah. Well, you know, you and I have talked a lot about this and, you know, I, I always say the two most powerful chakras in your body are your mind, your divine mind and your co-creation. And, and so much of our attention is given to the lower extremity. And I say that PP gets you in trouble every time. And we're adults here. We're adults here, so we're, we're going to talk a little bit about that because you're driven by your body mind function as opposed to your mind body function. The body should always be responding to the mind and not the reproductive order. Now, that reproductive area is the only chakra in the body that can be activated by a thought. Now, that shows you how powerful it is. Now, when you're talking about creation, you're talking about where life begins. Therefore, when we enter into relationships, the first thing, you know, the pee pee wakes up or that little VJJ that Oprah talks about, calls it wakes <laughs> up and it says, woo, okay, attraction, attraction, attraction. But mm -hmm. guess what? As a relationship goes on, you come out of that relationship guess what? That signature stays behind. So we know how relationships, how you intimacy, when you are intimate with someone, the actual act of lovemaking or intercourse is an exchange of energy, right? Right. right. So guess what happens when that is no longer, that energy is no longer happening. You're leaving a signature behind. That's that drug addiction that you're talking mm -hmm. about. So when you see a man or a woman that resembles or reminds you of that, that girlfriend or that previous girlfriend or boyfriend, what happens? That little area gets activated again. And I often say, okay, what are you seeing in this person? Is it a mind body connection or a body mind connection? Yes. Yes. So y'all see why. Um, when I call Miss Charlotte, I, uh, <laughs> I, I'm calling because sometimes when you call people, they gonna try to be on your side. But when I call her, she said, well, what, what is it about this person? And I'd be like, um, see you, um, and that's, that's your first thing you, um, and if this mm -hmm. person really meant that much to you, then it would come out fast and it'll be fluid. And then then you get to the the part where we're talking about the the sexual part or whatever and a lot of people don't know that for whatever reason a lot of people don't know that um that that signature that you call it because i didn't have some some signatures stayed okay <laughs> i'm talking about like john hancock over here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh just stay with me and i can't even figure out why i can't i can't stop thinking about this person even though we haven't talked or whatever or we decided we were gonna not uh, do this whole relationship thing or whatever. Or why am I texting this person at twelve o'clock? Mm -hmm. Like it's it's stuff like that. So yes, mm -hmm. the that that really is true, and um, I've 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 got it firsthand. I am telling you it that when you start thinking about that that. Uh, chakra and the power of creation. You're talking about a thought that can activate a body function. 
you can't think about how your heart beating or your mm -hmm. liver or your kidney, none of that. But the moment you have a nocturnal thought, your body is activated. That's how powerful that energy is. Therefore, when it's not understood, it's very easily misunderstood and it can create all kinds of drama in your life. And, you know, and some people, when you started talking about four month relationships, when people understand it's just sex or it's just sexual, mm -hmm. that's, that's not, that's not relationship. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, I mean, or I should say that's not intimacy. It is a relationship, right. but it's not intimacy. I thought that what you said about compatibility is so very key. And I think that you really, this is where I see your level of maturity. Because I mean, when you start talking about finding out if you can, if if you and I were, were stuck someplace for a week, we would have plenty to talk about. Right, right. You right, know, right, right, and it right. would not be a sexually driven kind of connection that we would literally be able to communicate and dialogue and laugh and joke and find all kinds of things to do. Whereas if you are with a girlfriend or a boyfriend or something like that, you feel that there is a nocturnal connection that requires right. you to participate in a certain way. And you got to get to the heart of the matter before you can get to that physical part of the matter in your relationship. Right. So, um, and that's the, the example with going somewhere and being, just being and being stuck or whatever. So a lot of people had to do that during the pandemic. A lot of yeah. people had to do that. Um, even I remember, uh, remember in DC when we had that big storm, the snowmageddon or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so we were, because I was in college and we were tasked, we just tasked each other basically to, we got to get somebody to be with us for this period of time. And some people <laughs> were stuck with, some people were stuck with people that they really hate. <laughs> oh, ah, it's only the second day and I don't even want her to be in my room anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of people don't tackle in the first part of their relationship is, are we just more than the sexual encounter that, that we have? Mm -hmm. And if I, I, I try, I try not to just be that um, anymore. So I'll just stay away from the, the person altogether. Mm -hmm. But if, if I do like somebody, I want to see if we can just, be in a room for um five hours and have conversations or mm -hmm. can we talk about let's watch a movie and then talk about what we thought about the movie or whatever from not just the the 2d level okay yes so that's what um a lot of people are waking up to and starting to look for but then there's a lot that's not um i have an actual example I was at a club function and there were, uh, we were in like a little section area or whatever. And I told this girl, she had a really nice dress on. I said, you look real, um, what's the word? Um, like when you look not homely, but wholesome. I said, you look, I said, you look wholesome in that dress. <laughs> um, and she was like, she was, I said, you look wholesome in that dress. And she was like, huh? So I repeated it again because I didn't think that she heard me. I said, you really look real wholesome in a dress. And she said, wholesome? What's that? I said, oh, never mind. Never mind. It don't, it don't mean <laughs> <laughs> so that was a, even though she looked very good. So aesthetically, she was okay. And I could have said, okay, I'm going to continue this. Even though I just had one of the, the, the big things now, like the red flags, even though I just got my first red flag. But instead of following, uh, like my eighth grade basketball coach said, don't think with your little head, think with your big head. So with that, <laughs> with, with that, um, I, was, I was thinking a little bit more. And as I've gotten older and wiser and been able to discern what's, what's good for me and what probably wouldn't be very quickly that I was mm -hmm. like, Oh, no, nah, that's, that's okay. Um, have a good time. But it's, it's, it's uh, a lot of people that 
don't do that. A lot of people just say, well, this person looks this certain way and we'll just figure out the rest of it down the line. And usually right. down the line equals to nowhere. Yeah. And because it's you you are um you're in attraction mode you're not in in content mode you know and one of the things that tony robbins taught him when i was in in his coaching program he taught us you think from from the end result so you start thinking about you know when you in engage in someone or you see or are attracted to someone you ask yourself could this be the mother of my children or could this could i see myself in a in a house with a white picket fence two kids and a dog living the american dream although that's really not what that is anymore but that back in the day <laughs> It was that that's what you would always say. You know, uh, I used to tell my children and, and, you know, it's I came from that school. If you got a girl pregnant or in trouble, you had to marry her. So I used to always tell my children, my sons, I said, listen, when you get ready to do that, you look in your, her face and you ask yourself, are you willing to spend the rest of your life? with this woman because those are the, the the side effects of thinking with your little head instead of your big head as your coach said so we don't go through that process of elimination yes she may not just be wholesome she may be all that and a bag of chips but you know when the chips are gone then what are you going to do <laughs> Okay. Well, I know that Michael wants to come in. He's got a couple okay. of questions for you, but I wanna I wanna take a, a little break, pay some bills. So I just want to thank everyone for joining in the conversation. Please feel free to put your comments in, or uh, uh, so that uh, Dr. Phil can answer your questions. And I'm so excited to have you with us again tonight. And thank you so much. This is Reverend Dr. Charles Stokes Manning, and this is the Sunday. Sunday evening masterclass right here on New Thought Media Network. New Thought Radio, music from all your favorite New Thought artists. From Jamie Lula, Karen Drucker, Gary Lynn Floyd, Ricky Byers, Daniel Namod, Eddie Watkins Jr., and many, many more. 24-7 New Thought Radio. Positively inspiring. Welcome back. Hey, Pastor Michael. You yes. want, do you want to share that inquiry that you had for yeah. Dr. Phil this evening? You guys are so interesting. I mean, uh, uh, but I wanted to share this because, you know, I have a vast staff of people <laughs> that are constantly sharing with me stuff. Oh, you should put this on your program or, you know, okay. So I'm going to, let me just, I'm going to put you guys on another screen here. There you go. You guys will still be able to see me. So mm -hmm. this, I, I said, I said, I have to share this with uh, Phil and Charlotte because this is, <laughs> this is really good. Um, all right. So 
what they do on uh, Newsweek is they'll go ahead and they'll have uh, like articles um, from uh, Reddit and they'll go ahead and they'll say, well, what do you think about this? So this is it. So the woman seeking the Internet's advice after a less than smooth <laughs> first visit to meeting her boyfriend's parents in a now viral post to subreddit, am I the a-hole? <laughs> the user said that because of COVID, she was unable to visit her boyfriend's parents in the U.S. She said the two met in Paris and have been living together for six months. She wrote, I was more than happy to go because obviously it was very important to him. Upon arrival at her boyfriend's home, young lady was surprised at his parents' behavior, she wrote. She said, while at first they were welcoming and things were going great, then the stuff hit the fan. It didn't say that, but I just... <laughs> she said, okay, so, uh, so the uh, young lady said, she says, during our first meal, they asked me if I knew any prayers, and I said no. His mother told me, it's the least you could know. And I was like, <clears throat> sorry, but I don't believe in God. Oh, Lordy. Oh, boy. Yeah, I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, Lordy. The, 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 oh, this gets better. Oh, this gets better. I cannot make this stuff up, okay? <laughs> she said that she was later surprised to learn that her boyfriend's mother wanted the couple to sleep in, in separate rooms because it was more appropriate. I have never seen an adult couple sleeping separately. We live together, so like, why would she care? She attempted to make a joke, which only seemed to make the situation worse. And since it seemed that the issue was about sex, I tried to reassure her by making a joke about it. And she looked so offended by the fact that I had implied that we were having sex. And I felt like I had insulted her, even though that we were both adults. Oh, this is... <laughs> She said, so after trying to persuade his mother otherwise, the two slept in separate rooms. The situation came to a head when his mother expected that she would join them for church. Uh, the Reddit uh, contributor declined to say that, uh, declined saying that church made her feel uncomfortable given that she does not believe in God. Oh, <laughs> Can you see how south this, this is? This is not going very good here. She said uh, she stood her ground despite being pushed and refused to join them. Okay. After this, my boyfriend said that I was not respecting them, she wrote. I told him that I was 100% respecting their beliefs, but they were not the ones respecting mine. Honestly, I was a bit upset by his behavior. Oh, yeah, <laughs> because mm -hmm. while I agree that uh, myself and his mother might see things differently, I think it's healthy to explain, to talk about why I disagree with calmness and respect. I'm almost done here. Commenters were divided over who was to blame for the uncomfortable situation. Did the young lady go over the line by making a joke regarding sex? Were the parents too? fundamentalist <laughs> many uh, pointed to the boyfriend saying that he should have warned his girlfriend before they arrived at the parents home uh so one of the commenter wrote this did your boyfriend give you any idea of what to expect when you got there it sounds like he didn't prep you at all for what would happen when you got to his parents house i think he is the biggest a-hole here uh, almost done. He says, he says, this is a glimpse into your future. If you marry into this family, another commenter wrote, they will be nightmare in laws. And your boyfriend sounds like a mommy's boy who does whatever they tell him to do. 
your comments, Dr. Manning you, and Dr. <clears throat> good. You go ahead, Phil. Okay, so I, it's it's a let's start with the the girl first. Okay, so when you're going into a into somebody's home or whatever, what I always do is I go in as the the purest angel that I can be. Okay. <laughs> So, because it's, you don't know what's what or what or whatnot, and that could happen. You ha could have um, the the ultra religious or whatever parents that are just old school, super old school, whatever. Um, so I'll always let them set the tone as to what I can or cannot do or say. So if, if, uh, if I say something or whatever and their response or clap back or whatever, is something that is a little bit um, risque or it might be a little raunchy or whatever, then I know that even though I'm not gonna do it back, that I am I can let my guard down a little bit and just be cool with um, being a little more laid back and not having to do the whole like and super impress your parents or whatever, even though I'm gonna do that anyway, but just, just not being so stringent in um, our actual interaction. Right. That's well, Phil, do you think that, especially in this case, that the uh, boyfriend could have taken her aside and said, listen, I really want you to meet my parents, but I just need to warn you here. Right. That... So it, in, go ahead. Yeah. That, that they're going to be a certain way, but that is also a red flag within their relationship that they haven't talked about this already. Yes. So Absolutely. why haven't you talked about how your parents are and how his parents are or whatever? Because if y'all had already talked about this, you would have known that his parents were um, big religious uh, people and they didn't like certain stuff or whatever. So that's a, a big laugh, lack of communication that they had together and that could auto automatically be a red flag just in their relationship. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, you know, I, as, as we were talking before we came on the air, you know, we have generations here, you know, Michael, you're in a generation, uh, an, another, uh, 10 years younger than my, me and Phil is three generations younger than me. Older stuff. You're, you're 39 now. Well, that's true. That's true. It, <laughs> it, in consciousness, yes. Okay. But I, I come from a very old school, and I, I told you, I, you know, very early in, uh, when I had my first child, my husband and I were not married, and my grandmother came to stay with me for, uh, for six weeks, and then I left my home and went to her home, and and when my husband, well, he was my my boyfriend or, you know, we cohabitated at that time, came to get me to bring me back and we were going to sleep together. We have an infant baby now. My grandmother said, oh, not here. You know, now you can sleep together at your house, but unmarried people don't sleep together in my house. Now, I thought it was absolutely ridiculous. We have an infant baby here, but it's abiding by those right. old school rules. So this couple sounds to me, first of all, they don't sound like white people. I'm going to say that. And okay. I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to say that because number one, uh, it, you know, well, I want to, I want to, I want to back that up a little bit because in some instances they do sound like white people because <laughs> a, 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 a black guy, taking you home for the holidays with his parents, going to tell you up front, look, my mama is a Sunday go to meeting and we do right. this. So you got to be prepared for, for this. And look, it's all you like. Phil says, just fix the man's plate. You don't have to assert <laughs> your, your feminist beliefs and all that other stuff in a short term when you're in a guest in someone else's home. Right, so you right. got to kind of feel things out. You got to recognize. And if in fact, it's going to be a conflict for you, stay your behind in a hotel. Then you don't have to deal with that kind of nonsense. Exactly. But if you are going to go into someone else's domain, 
you have to be you have to abide by their wishes as as you know as old old school or old fashioned as they may be now phil said that that would be acceptable in his mother's house he could sleep with his girlfriend in his mother's house however i bet you his mother couldn't sleep with her boyfriend <laughs> in her mother's house so okay i don't i don't know why they allowed me to do this because i just knew that they was going to say no or i knew that they were going to say something so all i did was <laughs> i was like let's just stay in here for a while and if they don't say nothing then we'll just stay and <laughs> nobody... yeah you don't you don't get the you don't get the shoe dropped <laughs> right exactly so if, if it's it's not a crime if there's no police around, as they say. Um, so I just, just like, <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Yeah. So I was just like, okay, um, well, they let us in here. They must they must not care that much because my mom is one that will say something if it's something that she uh, is opposed to or whatever. She will say, well, hey, uh, I know y'all. Uh, whatever because that's what and a prime example is that of that was when i was a little bit younger um my sister who is two years younger than me she would have sleepovers okay and mm -hmm. with sleepovers there's a lot of girls or whatever so my mom would make sure that there was no nothing going on anywhere yeah so mm -hmm. she would go check on joe go check on us or whatever go check on me personally to make sure make I was sure still in you weren't in that pajama party yeah <laughs> right. i know make sure i was still in my room um so yeah it, it's just a i guess like you say a difference of generation now i know a grandma wouldn't be 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 uh with it none mm -hmm. no because it, yeah yeah we we only have a, a couple more minutes i the reason i brought that up is i think that uh, well i Three things I see. First of all, is that I don't I don't see a spiritual connection there. Okay, because it, it hasn't been important or talked about. Right. The second thing is that uh, why would he take his living lover over Even to mom over to mom's house when again that and you know what the, the I I know some of these folk they blame mom blames her. Mm -hmm. Not him. Right. Okay. That hussy, you know, is you know, <laughs> going ahead yeah. and, yeah. and doing that. I, yeah. I, I, when I read that, I really did feel bad for the woman. I just said, you know, um, I, I wish that the boyfriend would have again had an honest conversation. You guys yeah. have 30 seconds. Yeah. And you know what, Phil? It, this is how it is with you. So we're, you got to, you got to, you got to come back. And um, Michael, really? we gotta have him back and and get. I I really would like to go into more mental relationships mm -hmm. and how you develop mental relationships. That sacred component to relationships. So thank okay. you, sweetheart. I love you dearly. Have Welcome. the best and happiest Christmas and Christmas to the family and all of that. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. This is Sunday evening masterclass with Dr. Charlotte right here on New Thought Media Network. for Spiritual Living Denver for your continued support. Thank you Center for Spiritual Living Midtown Atlanta for your monthly contribution. Thank you Center for Spiritual Living North Jersey for your monthly contribution. And Suze Aja, thank you for your very generous donation. generous technology grant and a big shout out to all our committed donors